or like adjuster drops and things like that. Oh, that's the other one, cover effects. <sighs> I will get to that in a second. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, I finally have in my hot little hands the new ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. And I had questions about this, probably the first one that comes to mind. What is the difference between that and the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer? So I thought today it'd be fun to do like a, a, wear, a wear test. I mean, it's going to be a casual wear test because we've already done this. I know I like it a lot and I don't think that there's going to be like a big performance difference here, but I want to wear one on one side of my face and one on the other just so that you can see how makeup goes on differently on top of each one and maybe like help you make a decision between the two if that's something that you're interested in. But hopefully I'll also be able to give you guys some things that this might dupe for since this is such a cost effect. ColourPop is always cost effective. So I'm going to move you guys in and we're just going to do like a casual color poppy get ready with me kind of thing that also ends in a wear test. So let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> I started using that skincare item that I was telling you guys about in the last video that's actually medicated by my dermatologist. And I feel like it's fading everything except my melasma mustache <laughs> so far, which is like making it more obvious. Look. <laughs> Just trust the process, Khaki. Okay, so we're gonna start with the new one here. And I got this in the shade, oh, uh, try again, Fair 05W, which is the same shade that I have this one in. Oh no, oops, I messed up. Never mind. I got it in Fair 05W and I got this one in Fair 2W. So we're already off to a great start. We will just. We will just bronze a little bit. I, I did put it on the back of my hand and I was like, girl, that's light. Guys, yeah, that's light. Uh, <laughs> 27 weeks pregnant today and I feel like I look how I feel. <laughs> like I have a parasite in my belly and it's winning. But I have felt some relief the last couple of days and oddly it's come in the form of eating more fruit. Fruit has been the answer for me to having less heartburn because heartburn was ruining my life. So like yesterday was chill. Like I had a really nice chill Sunday, which is something that doesn't happen to me in a while. I basically just sleep all day. So uh, lately my binge watch has been the Kiki Chanel, sorry, oh, anti MLM videos. And man, I have so many thoughts. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, it's too light, fam. Like, let's be real, I bought the wrong shade, but I think we can get there with some bronzer and things like that. I feel like that went on really evenly and I also feel like it found its coverage level on its own. I don't feel like I could like comfortably happily build it necessarily. We can try a little at the risk of putting too much gosh darn makeup on, but let's see here. See if we can like build it up almost like a concealer because to be honest, it's basically a concealer color. I guess it was just like when I was first putting it on, I saw the sponge marks. And when you see the sponge marks, to me, that's very like, spread me out a little bit more. <laughs> I don't want to be on here this thick. That's actually, okay, no, because it let the first layer dry down. It actually built really nicely. So I'm gonna do that on my, my little stosh area too. But yeah, man, it made me really like rethink. I don't know if you guys have caught up on those. I'm probably like the last of the game, but they're really good binge watches just because <laughs> I don't know. It's like she unearths so many things that like you already kind of knew, but you didn't know. Like you didn't see it with your own eyes necessarily, unless you've like been in an MLM. And it made me really rethink a lot of, I don't know, my own preconceived notions about them. I'm going to do like a whole get ready with me, a whole video where we talk about like videos I regret making. So look forward to that. We're not going to get into that today, but if you haven't checked out Kiki Chanel's channel, she initially kind of rubbed me the wrong way because she did that whole video where she was um, critiquing Tati and I was like a major Tati stan at the time. And I haven't watched her apology video, but she did, you know, come back around <laughs> on it apparently. But yeah, I, I'm glad that I took another look, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. So that is a pretty darn good like side by side. Just comparison of like coverage level and things like that. I am gonna try and wear this without powder today just because that's usually my groove. 
And let's go ahead and go in with the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Tinted Moisturizer, which I have in a slightly deeper shade. <laughs> Same sponge, bad science, it's fine. We know that we like this one. This is actually such a good line and I wanna talk, I wanna talk briefly. I think that today is the day to talk about this. I have a lot of stuff on my mind right now and uh, I tend to get kind of out of breath <laughs> so I need, to, I need to pace myself. But um, the whole idea of inclusivity around shade ranges right now, it's like very, very top of mind in the beauty community. I feel like a lot of us feel very desperate to have some kind of impact, <laughs> you know, and, and to make our voices heard for good if we can. And a lot of that seems to come in the form of expressing that we had an interest in a certain release, not just canceling it, but saying that we were interested in it, but we're not buying it for X reason or that we don't like it for X reason or we don't recommend it for X reason, often X reason being that the shade range is woefully incomplete. And so, the most recent example of that over this past weekend was the new foundation release by Han Healthy and Natural. Okay, so you can see, take a break from the conversation here for a second, the different coverage levels that are happening here. And I am going to try and just build that a little bit underneath my eyes, see if I can get a little bit more coverage with the, the tinted moisturizer, the same way we did with the foundation. But you know, they're not the same product. That was kind of my my big question. I was like, what's the difference? Why do we need two? But there is a pretty obvious difference here. And I should say, like the whole reason that I, I even thought about that is just because ColourPop has the funding and also seemingly just like, you know, does the legwork to put out a release that has a huge shade range. Like they do a really, really good job. And Kiki G did a video recently on this particular tinted moisturizer because she was like, I'm so excited to possibly be able to include something in my kit that has a really good shade range for, you know, my entire client base, essentially, that's cost effective and cruelty free. So like, if it gets her stamp of approval on inclusivity, I'm here for it because, you know, she works on so many faces and she takes it extremely, extremely seriously. I'm gonna kind of like not talk through the rest of the products that I'm using uh, because I have some other stuff that I wanna talk about, but um, I am going to be using the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in between the sheets. And then I got two eyeshadows from them in Brady and Twitter Painted. So I'm gonna be using those as well, but we're gonna do two things at once. So anyway, Han put out, I wanna say like, I'm probably wrong. I'm almost definitely wrong, I'm just guessing. It felt like eight shades or something like that. And there was like one deep shade that looked kind of like a caramel color. And it was just so tone deaf in 2020. And I mainly noticed this on State of Kate. She was the first one that I kind of saw mention it because she's a big fan of the brand. You guys know, if you watch my channel for a while, I tried a couple of products from them and I want to like them because they are affordable, Han is, or they're a little bit more affordable for a clean beauty brand. But uh, I tried their concealer and it was like really, really pink and really, really greasy and wouldn't dry down and settled into lines and everything. And I was like, I don't care how inexpensive this is, it's not good, so. And that kind of put me off trying other things from the brand. Like if you can put out a powder product, that is nice. I'm not that impressed by that. <laughs> you know, mineral pigment is mineral pigment. But like when it comes to complexion products, that's where I feel like, you know, a brand really steps out and makes a statement. And in this case, they made kind of a tone deaf statement. Okay, like a, a very tone deaf statement. And recently on my channel, I just kind of called, not necessarily like called out, but you know, because I don't really have the power to do that, but I was just kind of calling attention to some of the brands that I would love to see a little bit like more inclusivity and a better shade range from that I feel like kind of got away with it in the past. They're not necessarily putting out releases right this second, but it's almost like, hey guys, we really like your brand. Make sure your next release is a little bit better, you know? And for me, that's like the Honest Beauty CC cream that they came out with. They like redid the formula and re-released it, I wanna say like last year or something, but came out with four shades. The CC cream, oh, this is something that didn't age very well, the CC cream from Supergoop that I personally called my foundation of the year last year, I was so heads down and up my own butt about clean beauty that I was just all about like, whether it was affordable and whether the ingredients were good. And I just completely overlooked their, you know, their four shade range that I can wear two of the shades in, okay? Like that's not, 
It's not very well informed, but at the same time, I don't make a big point of calling them out because I do know personally, because I have, you know, spoken with a lot of representatives at the brand, that they actually, when I ask them to send me a fresh tube of it, because I am technically an affiliate with them, they said, we're kind of trying not to do that right now. And I was like, I was like, why? And they're like, because our shade range isn't that great. And we want to reformulate and we want to introduce new shades and things like that. And like, they knew, they knew like a year and a half ago, <laughs> you know, that like this was something that kind of was like, it needed to be remedied. And so I don't feel as much like they need to like wake up because they really have been trying to reformulate. Like actually one of my viewers said that they accidentally got sent either a text message or an Instagram message or something like that of like the new packaging. It got like leaked or whatever uh, of the reformulation. I genuinely don't know what's taking them so long, but at the same time, I would rather a brand sit on it and wait and figure it out and do it right than to uh, to put out four shades, you know? Bosha was one that they're not cruelty free, but they are like clean beauty, clean at Sephora or whatever. And so I felt that was worth mentioning because I actually bought that a while ago, not knowing they weren't cruelty free. I ended up returning it both because I found that it wasn't cruelty free and also because the palest shade was like the wrongest color for me ever. It was like embarrassingly wrong. And those were kind of the big three that I had talked about, but this Han release, it kind of makes me, and it's sort of in the same conversation as like the Cure Wise release, right? The, the new concealer, where I feel like there are a lot of brands right now, especially ones that are like smaller brands that feel like they kind of have an excuse because they're just not as well funded, like by leaps and bounds. Let's be real, like it is truly night and day being a small brand versus like a very established brand in terms of, you know, your, just, your, your spending ability, your ability to back your own releases with money. And so it is a little bit more, I don't know, it's obviously they're taking on more risk and things like that. But I think that there is this sentiment that we can't be perfect, therefore we might as well just put out what we have. Like we're gonna get flack for it no matter what because it's a completely punishing and unforgiving environment right now. And no matter what we do, someone is going to hate it kind of thing. And so they just go ahead and do it. And I just wanna say, at least from my standpoint, it isn't about perfection. Like when we talk about, for example, the Thrive Cosmetics release. Uh, this was two years ago, they came out with this CC cream and they came out with 18 shades. I don't have a perfect shade in this. I have to mix two shades to get my ideal shade. I tend to wear fair light, but I can kind of mix it with its next shade and get an even better match. But at the same time, like, I don't think the point is for every single person in every single brand to have their perfect shade because people's skin changes, their preferences change, you can wear makeup differently, there are like adjuster drops and things like that. Oh, that's the other one, cover effects, adjuster drops. I will get to that in a second. We're gonna blush and talk, blush and talk. So that was the whole reason. I was like, there was something else. <laughs> There was another one that was the reason that I even wanted to like, you know, bring this up on Instagram. Anyway, so I think that that's the whole thing is that we're not necessarily looking for perfection and that like every single person has one shade that matches their face. It's just spread them out evenly. Thrive brought tons of different people in. I know Carissa told me about their like research and development phase for this foundation basically just bringing in so many different experts and models of different skin tones and people in the business who had like developed shade ranges in the past and things like that, and just genuinely wanting to do right by the customer and provide something for everyone within 18 shades. And I would not be at all surprised, I don't know this for sure, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they like expanded further at some point. But at the same time, that to me <laughs> speaks much better of a brand than just saying, well, you know, everybody's gonna crap on it either way. We might as well like release what we have because what Han did is they said, <laughs> this is so tacky. They said, it's not straightforward creating deep shades and that the more pigment we added, the more it diluted the actives. And I was like, okay, then don't put out a foundation, like figure it out. You know what I mean? Like do it or don't do it, but like don't do it wrong. So 
let's talk about Cover Effects. <laughs> Cover Effects is a brand that I truly always stood behind, especially during my like clean beauty journey because they were a really good mainstream, I felt like semi-affordable clean beauty brand that had a fantastic shade range in most cases. Wow, 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 something weird happened. <laughs> so last week they put out their new tinted moisturizer. And someone sent it to me immediately, not the actual product. They said they, they linked me to the release basically. And then, oh my God, I forgot how much I love Super Shock Shadows. Oh, they feel so good. I go in there and I'm like prepared to buy, you know, I'm like, well, this is something that is a brand that I love and it is a product type that I love. I am prepared to spend my money on this and give you guys the full scoop -a you know? Okie dokie, so I get in there and I go, where is my sh... There's four shades. There's four shades in a release in 2020. There's four shades. And I posted about it. That was actually... <laughs> it slipped my mind earlier <laughs> because I have serious pregnancy brain. But uh, yeah, that was what initially even started the conversation around, uh, around wanting to talk about brands that only had four shades. <laughs> and like I said, to me, Granted, none of it is good, but there's not, there's a big difference to me between someone who put out four shades a year and a half ago. It's not ideal, but at the same time, to do it in July of 2020, I mean, that's just suicide, honestly. Like, what do you think is about to happen? You're gonna get roasted, and I'm so, I'm sorry to tell you. And so, I uh, I posted about it, and one very maybe a couple of very optimistic viewers wanted to give the brand the benefit of the doubt. They weren't necessarily like coming for me and being like, you're being a bully or something, but they were like, ah, you know, they put this video out. They put this video out of the proper way to use this. And these are the instructions. They've got this brush. Cover Effects has this fancy brush. Reminds me of the Bare Minerals Bare Pro brush that they're, you know, they say is just like so important to have for their their makeup collections and um it has three little holes in it and they put together a digital video okay it was like an animation i'll stick it on the screen <laughs> and it was basically put a drop of our new foundation whatever it is tinted moisturizer in one of the little holes then primer in another of the little holes and then custom adjuster drops, your custom cover drops, you know, the, the, you know, concentrated pigment that they sell in the third hole. And you've got a customized makeup situation. First of all, to quote one of my lovely viewers, if I wanted to play arts and crafts, I would go to Michael's. Okay. I don't need to mix my own darn foundation, especially not at those prices. Just put out a foundation that matches, you know? I will use the custom adjuster drops if you've put out a minimum of 15 shades that are like, you know, spread across a pretty good spectrum. And uh, maybe one of them doesn't necessarily perfectly match me. But if you made an effort, 15 is an arbitrary number. I don't even know. I don't know what the right number is, but I'm willing to give a brand a chance if they feel like they're spread across the spectrum instead of all on the white end. And honestly, I don't care how spread out they are, Four isn't enough. There's a whole humanity out here. Four is not enough. So then I posted that video and I was like, this feels very CYA is what we call it in the marketing business, <laughs> which, you know, is cover, cover my butt, cover your butt basically. And uh, that is, it is truly like it is an acronym, a term that we use if someone has done something wrong from a PR standpoint and they're just trying to like make good with their audience, we call it CYA. And uh, that is what that was. It screamed CYA to me. And I said so. I was like, this sounds like a Band-Aid. This is an attempt to save some face for a situation that they thought they were going to get away with and they were wrong. Then one of my other lovely viewers hunted down the original PR photo, the press, you know, their, their original advertisement or whatever. And the model is holding up the brush and she's like, and she's got the three holes and they're all full of foundation. I was like, this was not the plan, <laughs> okay? It's clever what you tried to do to CYA, but 
It was not the plan. Okay, so stop treating us like we're stupid. And I think that that's the main thing, right? It's just stop treating the customer like what they deserve is smoke and mirrors. In return for your hard earned money, a brand should be trying to convince you that their product is outstanding and that they are truly out here leading on behalf of all of the customers, male, female, whatever is in between, black, white, whatever is in between. Like there should be a mindfulness for that kind of inclusivity from the absolute jump of developing a product. And so many brands are doing it, right? So somebody like Aether Beauty, you know, she just put out this beautiful gold highlighter, which we will, we'll use in a video, but like, it's not for me. It is for deep skin tones. And to me, there are so many of these brands that are like trying to put their hard earned R&D dollars into making things that are inclusive and they're trying to, with every release, try and be mindful. Like that's where their brain is starting at is like the mindfulness of making it count for everybody no matter what their budget is kind of thing versus the idea of kind of trying to pull one over on the customer, which is what I kind of feel like CoverFX did, especially because CoverFX has no excuse. They have tons of money, okay? They're fine. <laughs> I don't know what their financials look like, but I mean, they're obviously a very well-established brand. So yeah, I think that, and I almost put it out uh, like on my Instagram, but I also felt like there was no way to say it without like caveating it for the brands that I think are doing it right. And I just feel like, if I can be, you know, kind of nuanced here. What we're looking for as consumers, because I don't think that it should fall on the consumer to have to worry about this stuff as much. You should be able to go and shop for makeup and find something that works for you. It shouldn't be on, I mean, I don't mind it as an influencer, but it shouldn't be on the customer to sit there and like worry about canceling brands because they're not doing things right. Like brands should just be doing things right. I would like to see brands lead. Like why not take some of your dollars that you have and hire people, give people jobs, J-O-B-S, that are going to have the experience and the know-how to do it right if you don't, okay? It's the same thing I talk about when I say like brand owners need to understand when in crisis, if there is some kind of crisis that comes up at their company, usually like a PR crisis, that they are not in most cases a PR professional, Rosemary. <laughs> there are so many brands I've seen kind of fall victim to this recently where they think that they are, the brand owner is the best voice for the company no matter what. I have fallen victim to this myself. Criticism, egregious criticism, overwhelming criticism, and a lot of people saying the same thing. I think that that's kind of the tsunami that ends up kind of hitting people the wrong way. As a brand owner is when you feel, I've talked about this in the past, when you feel like someone's building a case against you because everyone's saying the same thing. That to me, is the time where you as a brand owner step back and say, I am not a PR professional. I do not understand how to smooth this over. I am not the best person for the job right now, as far as answering Instagram comments, you know, and just bring in somebody who can be diplomatic, bring in somebody, even if it's your friend, okay. <laughs> and they're like working, you know, just to help you out in that moment, but just to have enough distance from the situation and from all those R&D dollars that went into the product and everything like that and just basically like the, all the 500 reasons to take it personally and understand that there is a conversation to be had outside of articulating why you're not in the wrong. Because, okay, so this is uh, kind of the big lesson that I think a lot of us were supposed to take out of June, right? <laughs> and the big shift in mindset and everything that happened in June, not to say that it's over, but it began in June. Like the biggest thing that I took from that is that being wrong isn't that scary. <laughs> Saying you were wrong and apologizing and learning isn't as scary as we want to make it. And I feel like there are too many brands that are still kind of like hiding from it and hoping that it just kind of blows over and it's not going to blow over. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to. So, and it shouldn't. 
my eyes are very parkly. I haven't had parkly eyes in a while. And I think that that's kind of like, I don't know, I posted about uh, Jenna Marbles leaving the platform. When it happened, this is, <laughs> that feels random, doesn't it? Kind of like out of left field. But when she left, she, her whole video like articulated how she just really didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like that was just the worst thing in the world to her. And she's a Virgo, so she's kind of naturally a perfectionist. And I, I really felt for her because if I'm incurring any kind of criticism from anybody, she's literally incurring it a hundred thousand fold or something like that. Like just something crazy on every platform. And I think that there were other reasons that she truly <laughs> deserved to do exactly what she did, regardless of her reasoning. <laughs> she, she could have just said peace or nothing and I still would have understood like, <laughs> You know, I just think that like none of us can really put ourselves where she was at. But anyway, she did say, you know, the last thing I want to do is offend anyone and at the risk of offending people, you know what I mean? Like she would rather just not do anything. And that to me was super relatable because I think that's how a lot of people feel is just that they would rather back away from a conversation than risk saying the wrong thing. And I just... How, like the biggest lesson that I've taken away from a lot of it is that that's actually not the answer. Not that Jenna was in the wrong at all. Like I said, she has the full right to do whatever the daylights she wants to do. But that, you know, being wrong isn't as scary as staying in the shadows and just hoping that you're in the right by omission. You know what I mean? That you're perfect by omission, you know, at the risk of being wrong or doing it wrong or looking like an idiot or whatever. And I think that a lot of these brands, it's not so much that they're out here doing it wrong, it's that they don't want to listen once they have. I think that the appropriate response is, you know, you guys are right and we're sorry and we're going to do better. Like that is so much better than like just jumping to your own defense over and over and over again and trying to bail yourself out with a thimble. You know what we need? We need more blush. Shocking. Super shocking, right? Still, I'm just like not a huge fan of a, like a coverage look. We're gonna pretend for today that this is a look that I would typically go for, but it really isn't. <laughs> not lately. I just, what is that? Is that a bristle? I think it's a bristle. However, as these things go, as textures go on the skin, I love the blend of all the ColourPop textures because they really do find a happy medium between dry down and being really matte. <laughs> like even as I'm applying this with my brush, I can still feel, and like you saw a bristle stick to my face. It's still, it's not tacky by any means, but it still feels like skin and that's really nice. But yeah, I, I don't want to say that like I don't feel for brands right now because it's like, it's a scary place to be trying to figure out where to put your foot next. But at the same time, I think that it's all about humility and it's all about coming to the conversation with an open mind, not about trying to be perfect. And if you're not gonna be perfect, just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, being like, it's gonna suck either way. So, uh, you know, we're just gonna do it wrong. The foundation is $16 and the tendon moisturizer is $14. And in the foundation, you get uh, an ounce, whereas in this guy, you get quite a bit more. You get, I think, 1.4? 1.45 in the tinted moisturizer. That tinted moisturizer is honestly one of my, like, top faves so far this year that's come out just because I feel like it hits all the marks. It's very unoffensive on my skin in terms of, like, you know, irritation or anything like that. And it's very affordable. It's a lot of product for your money and it behaves very much like the Bite Beauty. Uh, I do like the Bite, but it also is <laughs> it's scented, which is not everybody's favorite thing. I do feel like if you can't afford the Bite Beauty foundation, the, the Micellar Change Maker foundation, the ColourPop is a really good alternative for it. And I would say that the, it's not glass skin, right? We're not getting that like super blurred thing. Let's go ahead and look at like the claims on this real quick. Holy mackerel. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times seven is 42, guys. 42 shades in this foundation. Wow. Wow. And do you see? Okay, so this is just how my eye does these things. It's like not just how deep does it go, because that's like the deepest shade right there. I mean, I think that's like a you know possible Nima Tang shade, but also just like the gradation, how it's like white even white, uh, medium, medium, and then deep, deep. So it's like an even dispersion. It's a pretty arbitrary way of looking at it, but I am not everyone. <laughs> I am unhuman, and so that's the best I can do. So cruelty-free and vegan, hyaluronic hydrating foundation, 
The Skin Perfecting Medium to Buildable Coverage Foundation creates healthy skin-like finish. Get coverage and hydration with the same good for you ingredients like hyaluronic acid for your healthiest looking skin ever. Formulated with fruit extracts to enhance the look of skin by instantly hydrating and diminishing the look of fine lines while delivering hydration over time. So the main thing, they've got hyaluronic acid and coconut water and uh, those are like the big call out ingredients. Again, you're not going to get like huge skincare benefit claims on products that are like, you know, this affordable. I feel like that's maybe the trade off. I've never particularly been like, oh my gosh, I wear this foundation because of all the skincare benefits and I definitely see them. You know, if you're not like fading my melasma, I, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna notice the difference. Just don't break me out. But the, uh, the promises don't say anything about the actual texture on the skin necessarily. I'm not getting like, like I said, that, you know, glass skin blur or anything like that. I don't think that this is a dupe for like the Uma or the like beauty bakery or something like that. It's just pretty. <laughs> it's just a pretty foundation a pretty fresh foundation man. And it's good for uh, a lot of skin types because I will say it wears really lightly on the face. It does have its own dry down, so it doesn't feel like really icky and dewy, but it has the hyaluronic acid in it, which I have my feelings on hyaluronic acid. If you use it any way that kind of irritates hyaluronic acid because it's like one of those temperamental ingredients, it either won't work or it'll actually dry your skin out. But right now, at least, it's feeling like it's giving me a lot of hydration, which is what they're, you know, claiming. So by the way, why, why is this not blended? <laughs> oh, because I'm spending too much time talking. <laughs> it's also not blended under my eye, but I really don't care. But yeah, it is giving me the claims, but they're giving me the same vibe. You know, it's just this one's got more coverage and feels more like a foundation, which is pretty much what you would expect from it. So I am going to wear this for the rest of my day. I'll do like a brief check-in at the end of the day. I don't anticipate anything really crazy happening here. <laughs> I trust ColourPop at this point. Their complexion products have come a really long way. We did not put a lot of makeup on my face today. So I don't feel like we're at huge risk for like makeup breakup or anything, but we will see, we will see. So uh, I will see you guys in at least eight hours and we will talk final thoughts. Hey guys, so it is the end of my day. I wanted to share final thoughts with you guys because I do have some. So. On the difference between the two, I will say they are pretty much the same, except one has more coverage. I did not expect anything different, but I still, I still prefer this one on the basis of coverage level. Now, the coverage being a little bit more on the foundation did mean that it exposed the flaws of this foundation in both cases, even more so because it is more pigmented. And so if I looked at myself kind of in the wrong light or something like that, I was very aware of how dry my skin looks. And that is surprising. Well, it's surprising if you think about the claims on the actual product, because you're like, well, we're talking about a hyaluronic acid product that's supposed to draw a thousand times its weight and moisture from the air. But if you aren't using hyaluronic acid, we talked about this earlier in the video, if you aren't using hyaluronic acid in the ways that hyaluronic acid really prefers to be used, which is like using it literally like right after you put a moisturizer on or something like that, or it's not combined with exactly the right ingredients other than that, it will actually draw moisture from your skin instead of drawing it from the air to your skin, which I don't know necessarily if like the ingredients in the product can like help with that or one thing or another, because there are products that have hyaluronic acid in them that have not done that to me, but this did not give me the all day kind of plumped hydration that I initially got when I applied it. And I feel like over the course of the day, you know, there was no powder or anything. And I still feel like I got a powdered dryness. And so it's not necessarily that it's bad. And I certainly don't think that it looks bad. I don't, but I do think that like, maybe I'm not the ideal skin type for it. <laughs> you know, it might be kind of better for people who do tend to get a little oilier over the course of the day, but still prefer a non completely sucked dry mattified, you know, super high coverage look. And that goes for both of them. It also kind of wanted to break up just a little bit with me touching my face, but that's also like a mask wearing thing right now. I feel like just about any foundation would do that. But as it did that, I don't feel like it maintained skin texture, like skin finish, the way that some of them that I prefer would, you know, 
like the Westman Atelier, which is $68 a stick. You know what I mean? We're not talking apples to apples here, but when I wear something without a powder, often I do that because I prefer that if something wears in over the day, it doesn't look like it also wore off. And this kind of still looks like it wore off. So in that sense, you're kind of getting what you pay for, but do I think that someone who is like on a budget, aware of what they're getting themselves into, spending 14 or $16 on either of these products is going to be disappointed? Absolutely not. Just be aware that if you have super, super dry skin, I would moisturize right before you use this product, or I would use like a really good hydrating, illuminating primer or something like that, because this is going to, whoa. I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but my dog just went crazy. <laughs> but it, it is going to sap the moisture from your skin. <laughs> if you're not careful. But I also think that that opens up the flexibility for it working for like a lot more uh, skin types, you know, like oilier skin types and stuff like that. Plus they've got a dream of a shade range. This is a very, very good release. I'm just not sure it's for me. It doesn't meet all of my needs necessarily, but I still think it's a really, really good release. So let me know if you guys have tried this and uh, if you have any additional questions about the performance of this product down below and I will try my best to answer if like this wasn't enough information for you because I do want to you know make sure that you guys are going into any purchasing decision as equipped as you can. Speaking of purchasing decisions, Wayne Goss just revealed his eyeshadow palette. Speaking of things that are super affordable, it's not affordable, but uh, it's six shadow palette and it's he's been teasing this release and I um, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, but I am so excited to try it. So on Wednesday, I will be in line to purchase and I hope you guys are excited about that too because I, I just, I need to know. I don't think I've bought an eyeshadow palette this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> There you go, that'll be my first eyeshadow palette purchase. But anyway guys, if you did enjoy this, if this was helpful, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next one, bye.